things that were really, um, um, I'm just going to highlight the best things I learned from these fireside chats. From Cantox, I was really surprised and taken aback when Cantox sponsored a Formula One team, and it only cost 2,500 2, euros, something like that. Does that sound crazy? That's the, the, the that's thing that we can learn here, that's the super line here. As why did they do that? Because they were the underdogs. There's a bigger company than them that's called TransferWise, which is their competition, and they're just crushing the market. But they are the second, they're just leading, okay? And they said, okay, why don't we partner with somebody who is also an underdog? So they went to the, excuse me, shittiest Formula One team, and found out that they were about to go bankrupt. And say, okay, we're just gonna settle this for, I don't know, 2,500 euro, like, <coughs> only? So they went for that deal. That gave them a lot of exposure in the media. They could blog about that. They did a great marketing campaign about why being an underdog, why being the second one is the best. So never mind if in the market you have got a leading, uh, leading company, you can always be the second and you can do things right. And even more so, if you partner with other second companies, you can do bigger things. In February, we learn about neuroscience and brain science with Anna Mikes. The good thing is, this code is, is really great because we have been enforcing this a lot, we have been highlighting this a lot, that sales, okay, sales is what keeps a company a lot. Marketing's great, posting cat pictures on Facebook and Instagram is really funny, okay, but that will not bring the dinner to your, clothes, to your plate. So this is, this is a big reminder that we need to be selling when we create our company because otherwise we're just getting tired. It's like riding a static bicycle. Like you're just getting tired, you're not going nowhere, but you're doing a lot of work. Great, so learn that. This, take, take this principle, okay? Just cast it in stone in your minds because it is something that keeps your company going. In March, we talked about company culture and growth hacking with David Tomás. David Tomás is the CEO of the Silver Club Group, which is a group company centered around or revolving around digital marketing. So email marketing, inbound sales, and growth hacking, et cetera, et cetera. And he said something that's really important. Most companies don't define a company culture. And when you don't define a company culture, you don't know whether you, the people you're partnering with, your co-founders, and you, if you're aligned or not. Setting on a paper, putting on a paper, writing down the company values, that will help you keep your message clear, to perfect your pitch, and moreover, to keep your partners aligned with your vision, okay? This is one of the first things you need to do. It's not like, I'll figure out later. If you figure it out later, maybe, your co-founders don't agree with that, and you waste a lot of time. <coughs> then we had the anniversary event, which was really great. It's probably the only event in which nothing has worked. Okay, uh, nothing has failed, sorry. Because we normally, behind the stage, there's a lot, of, a lot of trouble here. We try to make it up by being cheerful. But we learned one thing. Miguel Vicente, he's known for being one of the big investors and founders of Wallapop. Pretty much everybody knows Wallapop, everybody uses Wallapop. If you don't use Wallapop, you're missing out. It's the hottest target, of course. Okay? But he's not only that, he has like 10 other jobs. And whenever you're in entrepreneurship, one of the things you learn is keep your focus. Just focus on something and don't do anything else. So we ask him, how do you do it if you're running 10 companies at a time? I said, well, every morning I just commit to one important task. So this is a productivity tip you can take from that, from that uh, fireside chat. Write down the first important task that you need to tackle this morning, and then just do that, no interruptions until you finish. Great, we have learned about company culture, we have learned about marketing, sales, now we, we can learn also about productivity. And then we have the Female Founders Month, okay, we had um, Elena Torres. And with her, we talked about the composition of the teams, because above all, Besides being a key cast entrepreneur, Elena herself, and she's an investor as well. She's a coach to many teams, and with uh, Pao Capital, which is one of her companies, he invests not only money, but also in time, resources, and experience in young companies. And one of the things we have learned, which is also really important, and you need to, you need to, to stress a lot on, is the composition of the team, okay? Companies get acquired, mostly because of the team, not because of the idea. Why? Because team, the team has got people. People can execute. People have got skills. People do stuff. They achieve goals. 
okay? They increase sales in just one year by 200% or 1,000%, whatever. But that does the people, not the uh, <coughs> So he said, don't hire rock stars. Now it, it seems that everybody is on trying to create a unicorn. Everybody's trying to create, uh, to hire rock stars, ninjas, <coughs> wizards, pirates, and all sort of mythological creatures. No Eskimos. And she said, don't go for that. Because they will probably break the dynamics in your event, in your, in your company, sorry. Just hire people who really want to be part of that. People who are really committed to that. People who are passionate about the company. Because that will keep also the project going in the long term. Just think of your company as, as an investment. Partner not only with the people who you want to be with in five years time, 10 years time, not a matter of weeks. Good, also in June, we had Pablo Villalba, we had to move out of this, of this venue. And we used that, it was really fun, because it was, this was, first of all, our first event in English, we just tested, we said, it was great, let's do it again. We had to wait six months, sorry about that. Um, but what did we learn about Pablo? Pablo has got a company that is a digital nomad company. Basically, they travel a lot. The company was created in Las Canarias. They spent some time in Berlin. <coughs> Sometime in Barcelona, I think, then they went to ba Mali, Thailand, back to Berlin. Basically, I've been traveling along, like, like a rock and roll band, okay? I've been traveling the world. What, how did that help their company? Because this kind of digital nomads, <coughs> taking everybody on a, ca a caravan and just traveling around, helped them bonding and creating more team dynamics, this, this team, you know, this team culture. And they, it kept them focused. He was not saying anything bad about remote working, but he was saying, again, just thinking the people here, because at the very early stages of the startups, you need to be 100% committed and concentrated and focused on whatever you do. So I'm just going to take them, and they're going to see that I am 100% committed to make sure people to get the best out of this experience. He even said, he went farther to say that doing this is like doing an Erasmus. So everybody needs to do it, because if not, you don't understand it but it's the best time of your life. Then we proceeded to do a workout, okay? So we ended up the event in a workout. So that's why I said companies, not only sponsoring the event or being the speakers here or your companies, just come out to us with really crazy ideas you wanna make them happen, okay? We did a workout, we were doing squats for 20 minutes till our legs fell off, okay? That was so great, oh, that was so fun. That was product placement, by the way. Then in July, we learned about sales which was really stressed out by, by Anna Maikis in February. But we have one of the be best salesmen in Barcelona, which is just fun, he's next to me. <laughs> and he said, it's great to be selling or to expect to sell to big companies, but if you're a small company, that could, that could kill your company. Why? Contract negotiation, due diligences, um, delays in the payment, policies that you didn't know, unexperienced. So, this can kill you. Just go step by step, okay? Do not aim to say, if you are a software dev shop, don't try to aim to sell, to sell to La Caixa or eBay or Google from month one. This could kill you. Then we went to August, and we talked about gamification. As you can see, in the events, we try to cover a different topic so that you can learn a little bit about everything, so that I can also learn about that, okay? And we talked about gamification with uh, Dr. Oscar <coughs> Garcia Bagnella, uh, one of the founders of Cookie Boss. And one of the things that I could take away from that, and I think you could profit from this learning, is that we are constantly proving that the old things don't work anymore. Why is there a huge gamification trend? Why is there the FinTech wave nowadays? Why, why did mobile come up as something really big? Because the old things didn't, didn't work anymore. People are changing. People who were born in the 80s now are ruling companies. Now they are being head directors of big corporations, okay? And they have a different instinct, they have different values from the people who used to rule before. So they say, just try new stuff. Approach com old companies with new stuff. They're most likely, they're gonna be a little bit skeptical at the beginning, but some of them they wanna try and they will invest. Good, coming close to the end. And I don't want to delay this anymore because I also want to learn from Manel. But we learn from a former basketball player. It's not that we are short, 
Well, some of us are really are, but he's really tall. He used to play for uh, Barcelona, Spanish national team, Greek teams as well, if I remember correctly. And we learned about networking and the power of business by doing relationships, human relationships. Okay, so you learn about sales, digital marketing, growth hacking, whatever. And then we were missing the personal touch. Ferran is a business developer. He's also in 10, 20 different companies. He's one area director in the, the Bank of Andorra. He's also an angel investor. He's a coach. He's a writer. He's a lot of things. Okay, you learn a lot. But most of all, he knows people, he creates business networks, and he, he makes that everyone, every company in all these business networks profits from that, okay? And he said, just surround with people who are better than you. Because if you're the smarter person in the class, you're in the wrong class. You're not gonna learn, okay? Nobody's gonna tell you you're doing things wrong. Because everybody will be like, oh yes, yeah, great idea, great idea, then you're gonna fail. Just try to surround yourself with people who are smart. And almost finally, we learn also about the legal part of being an entrepreneur because we, these people, lawyers, they don't get exposure. Well, normally they get exposure for, for being the bad people, for being the bad cops. In the, in the, they are like the policemen, they are the dark side. We received Ignacy on stage with the Imperial March of Star, Star Wars because he's a huge Star Wars fan, okay? And we were talking about the legal mistakes entrepreneurs do when they create companies. About looking for investment, creating the partner's agreement, closing uh, projects with providers or contracts, whatever, or privacy. So he said something really important. I think the main takeaway from this uh, conversation was think long term when choosing your partner, something that has already been brought up before, right? So Because being an entrepreneur is not a road trip. It's not going 10 days to tour around Los Angeles or in the States or, or Italy. It's a marriage. There's a contract between you and your partners. So do you envision that you're gonna be with these people in 10 years time? If not, don't do it. Don't go for drinks. He said, and I, I, I didn't do, do wanna put this in the, in the slide. He said, don't go for drinks, get wasted, and sign up the partner's agreement in the morning because that's what I did. <laughs> so don't do that, okay? We're learning from the best, also from their failures. And last of all, last month we had a really, really special event. Everything went wrong before the event, so most of you will have read blog posts about it, but the event turned out to be really great. I thank Simon especially because he was ill. <laughs> it was the la very last thing that could go wrong in that event, is that he didn't show up because he was really ill. But he, he came in great spirit, and we could complete the event successfully. He even stayed for the network. And we were talking about product because he's a product designer. He's a product guy at Incubio, the big data academy in Barcelona. And long story short, he said, most people fail because they spend too much time polishing and ironing out everything on their product. He said, screw that. Launch your MVP. Learn from that. Don't delay your MVP launch. Just put it live, learn from your customers, and adapt it. People like to see that your product is being worked on and actualized and updated every day. Rather than having to wait and creating hype and building you know, expectation and then not delivering. And lastly, we're gonna be learning about him. I don't know if this video is gonna work. Let's see if it works. Because I don't know about you, but I wanna learn about King. And they are hiring. So if somebody wants to have a new experience in their career, this is the right event. You're in the approach. Let's see if this works. 